I'd like to do some revision or motivation. A geometric series is one where a constant ratio exists between all the terms. Consider for example one half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on. It can be shown that this is in fact the series from n is equal to one to infinity of one half to the n. Now let's build upon this a small bit. Consider the expression 1 over 1 minus x. It can be shown that this has a power series representation and that the power series representation is the infinite sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n with a radius of convergence of the magnitude of x less than 1. If you're not convinced of this you can look at the division on the rest of the screen. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through that though. The point really is that the function 1 over 1 minus x can be represented by an infinite power series. Now while this might be something which you're familiar with already, this is a, in my opinion quite an important property and it was quite a big deal when it was first discuss, discovered that this is possible. So we're going to build upon this and discuss the Taylor and Lorentz series. So looking at the function 1 over 1 minus x, the condition that the magnitude of x must be less than 1 is important because otherwise we won't get convergence and in actual fact it will not have a power series representation. So it only really works for small values of x. Unfortunately such conditions are quite limiting so we seek a more general expression. We make some assumptions about our function. First of all, we assume that f of x has a power series representation around x is equal to a. We assume that it is infinitely differentiable and we assume that all of the derivatives exist. Basically, this boils down to us assuming that we're talking about an analytic or holomorphic function. Holomorphic is a more modern term for the word analytic. Basically, if your function satisfies these, it is analytic. A function which wouldn't be analytic is one which has a divide by zero scenario or an infinity. Those are not analytic functions. So let's look at the power series of the following manner where we take from n is equal to zero to infinity of a coefficient let's say a sub n and x minus a to the n, a being some constant usually used to shift the function along the axis. So of course this is pretty straightforward, a0 plus a sub 1, x minus a to the 1 and so on. We can represent this particular power series by what's known as a Taylor series when it satisfies the conditions mentioned above, basically when the function is analytic. In doing so we get the Taylor series which is outlined here. That's not something I want to get bogged down in. If you want you can view my video number 13 in the section on thermodynamics. Remember, with an analytic function, it has a power series representation at the point x is equal to x0 or x is equal to a, whatever it is, and it's in powers of x minus x0. If it's differentiable at all points in the domain d, we refer to the function as being analytic. If it is differentiable only at, uh, excuse me, if it's differential at point x is equal to x0, we say that it is analytic at the point x is equal to x0. A function is referred to as singular when z or x is equal to x0 or z is equal to z0, where f of z or f of x is not analytic, it's not differentiable, or can even be defined at z is equal to z0. But in the neighborhood of z0, there it contains points which are analytic. So basically we may have a singular point at a particular, uh, a particular value for z, but in the neighborhood around it, the function is analytic. Analytic functions have Taylor or Maclaurin series expansions around x is equal to a. The difference between a Taylor and Maclaurin series is that for the Maclaurin series, a is equal to zero. Note that a divide by zero scenario or an infinity means that the function is not analytic.